All right, we are recording now. Well, welcome everyone to the Zcash protocol hangout number I don't remember. Uh, I'm Sonia Mann. I do community outreach at the Zcash Foundation, and I'm your host and moderator today. Um, let's see who has queued up to introduce themselves and predictably it's no one. Come on guys, get it, get it together. All right, Josh, you're up. Hey everyone. Uh, I'm Josh Cincinnati and I'm the executive director of the Zcash foundation. Uh, I'm really glad to see these calls continue. I find them to be super valuable and I think uh, lots of people in the community do as well. Looking forward to hearing what everyone has to say. I will note that, Fortunately, due to childcare duties, I'll probably have to leave in about a half hour, but I'm still really excited to hear, to hear everyone's thoughts today. So thanks. Hi, everyone. Hi, Dara. We're doing the queuing thing again. Um, and currently we're doing, we're in the midst of introductions. So Ian, you're up. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ian, uh, one of the original authors on the Zero Cash paper. Uh, founded scientist of Zcash and on the board of the Zcash Foundation. Elena, you can go ahead. Hi, everybody. I'm Elena. I'm on the growth team at Electric Coin Company. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to, the, to hear this conversation. I also would like to do a quick shout out. The polls close next Tuesday. And then we'll also be kicking off our community call uh, later that day. So that'll be a good chance for everybody to digest the, um, the poll and see, continue the community conversation then. Cool. All right, Josh. Josh Swihart. Thanks. Yeah, the other Josh. Um, <laughs> hi, um, I'm the, the less attractive um, Josh on the call. Oh. With, Dis uh, disagree. <laughs> I'm, working on my, I'm working on my beard to get there, but I had growth for the electric coin company. Um, so happy to be here again. All right, Cody. Hey everyone, Cody Burns from Accenture, uh, part of the Zcash community governance panel and my winter coat's coming in nice. So my name's not Josh though, so I don't have that going for me. <laughs> Other than that, happy to be here. Anyone can enter the Josh off despite the name. All right, I think we need someone to jump in and introduce themselves. Ah, so I'll read this for the people who are watching the video. This is Alexander James. Hi, I'm James, avid supporter, fascinated by your work. I ship post at, at Zcash LA, attended Zcon 1, see you at Zcon 2, uh, professionally data management and statistics programming for Big Pharma and Lil Finance, uh, and just listening in. All right, Iran, go ahead. Hi, I'm Aran Tromer, professor of computer science, founding scientist of the ECC, uh, advisor to the foundation, um, and all around snarky. Nice. All right, Dara. Um, I'm Dara Hopwood. Uh, I work for ECC, uh, doing protocol design and specification, uh, security analysis, um, I'm working on Zcash D. And I'm working on a programming language in my spare time. Matt, you're up. Hey, guys. Matt Luongo. I'm the CEO of Thesis. Uh, we are hoping to start work on Zcash uh, once we have gotten all of this government stuff done. So really excited to get more involved with the community. Awesome. All right. Free for all time. Who wants to chime in? Oh, I forgot to say I'm also a Zip editor. Yes. <laughs> uh, Decentralist Dan says in the chat, uh, hey all, Dan here, just a Zcash community member and Zec coin holder stoked for this call and you can find some of my thoughts at Decentralist Dan on Twitter. All right. Um, 
it's not strictly required that you introduce yourself right now, and it seems like the others who are present don't want to. Uh, oh, Hamid, do you want to go ahead and talk? Right. Sorry, I was struggling to unmute. Uh, hi, my name is Hamid, a community member, participants in the last calls, long-term holder, whatever you want to call it, so yeah, happy to be here. All right, Steve, why don't you introduce yourself and then we can go to uh, if someone wants to talk and hasn't introduced themselves, they can do it when they start speaking. I'm Steve. I'm on the community governance panel. Um, I've been interested in Zcash and zero knowledge proofs for a while. Okay. All right. Well, let's get started with discussion. We're pretty free form today. Uh, we can take it in any direction that y'all feel like. Does anyone have a, a thought that they'd like to share to start with? Come on, outspoken people, help me out here. I oh, know you have opinions. I, I, I always do. <laughs> um, but I, I will, um, I actually am just going to share, I think something that I shared on the forum earlier today, just because um, uh, in case people were watching, but I just uh, I just wanted to say um, that like I, I'm really pleased with how this process has gone and I'm very excited to, to reach what I think will be uh, a really satisfying conclusion to it. And despite all of my haranguing uh, around the cap on the form, I voted against a cap um, on zip 1014. And I did it simply because uh, for the reasons that were brought up by, by Josh and Dara and, and I think others, um, that in uh, and, and Matt Longo as well, that uh, it would unnecessarily uh, uh, stymie uh, and prevent, uh, I think, the ECC from doing a lot of the work that they want to do. Uh, I appreciated that that rationale, and I think that makes sense. And ultimately, like if you, you know, you see a lot of projects out there. Um, I, I, I think Dogecoin is is certainly like an an exception of a of a project that has like a zombie following despite a lack of like core development and progress. Um, but but ultimately, like there are these projects that still continue uh, without any kind of like, you know, uh, dedicated uh, and passionate advocates. And I, I, that said, like, I think Zcash would be uh, at, a, at a huge loss without the ECC uh, being a primary um, participant in that process. So despite, again, all of my various sometimes maybe altogether uh, two critical uh, comments on the form. Uh, I, I still, um, uh, I really uh, don't want this project to be without the ECC and that's why I voted against the cap um, in the, uh, uh, in the, you know, in the, in the, in the community panel. Um, anyway, I just wanted to, to say that and also, and I'm, and I'm sure Dara's probably gonna mention something too. I really don't like that stakeholder coin vote. I think it's it's terrible for a lot of reasons. I won't cover that now. I'm sure lots of other people have thoughts about it, but that's just my two cents. And that's it. I will shut up now. Thanks. Dara and then Ian. Or wait, no. Yeah. Was Ian trying was, to talk? Anyway, Dara, go ahead. I, I, I was just going to say I'm very pleased by the degree of consensus. I'm quite surprised that there's so much consensus. At least that that's my impression reading between the lines of what people have said on the forum, and maybe the forum isn't a totally accurate reflection of people's opinions, but um, at least the, the, there seems to be a lot of agreement. And I, I agree completely, the kind weighted voting is a terrible idea, and the specific implementation of, them, of it is even worse, but carry on. <laughs> And I think, I think, by the way, we should totally ignore the outcome of that. It's the hideous uh, vote that matters. I like that everyone is pre-registering their opinions on it before the <laughs> result. Or maybe not everyone is an overstatement here, but I encourage pre-registering an opinion on whether it's a good idea uh, before uh, the results come in, which they inevitably will. I expect Zuko to tweet it. All right, Ian, go ahead. Well, I think that's actually the important point. You need to commit to what your governance process is and what 
things you're going to listen to for signals because if you don't then after the fact you can basically look at them and come up with whatever retroactive justification you want to yeah. do whatever it is you wanted so for a decision for a governance process to have legitimacy we all need to say we are going to look at these things we are not going to look at these this is how we define a winner and the people who and we know who won and who lost this this is why in elections in general it's such a strong social norm that you don't change the rules in the middle of an election um, but, mm -hmm. Why don't, you know, uh, I feel like a good way to discuss at this point is to look at ZIP 1014 and talk about how it works, what it does, um, since, you know, that's very relevant to this vote. Dara, as a, a present ZIP editor, would you be willing to present the ZIP? Uh, I can't screen share, but um, basically, uh, if I remember correctly, um, it splits the it it defines a twenty percent um, uh, uh, def def fund uh, twenty percent of new issuance uh, between the first and second halvings, and then it splits that into um, three slices. Um, the exact uh, percentages of the slices um, are still up for debate. There's a question on the um, on the poll. But the default slices in um, ZIP 1014 uh, were 35% to ECC. Um, uh, let's try to remember now. 40% um, to uh, major grants and 25% uh, to um, uh, the foundation. And then um, uh, in ZIP 1014, as it's currently defined, um, there's also um, a monthly funding cap. Um, so if the fiat value um, from a given slice is more than 700,000 US dollars um, in a given month, then um, actually, this, this is not quite right. So Yeah, if, if the fiat value is more than 700,000 US dollars, then that goes into a, um, a reserve, a volatility reserve associated with that slice. And then if uh, subsequent months are less than 700,000 USD, then they can be topped up from the uh, volatility reserve. Um, if there's something to spend them on, obviously. Um, and let's see, there's also a community panel um, which gets to decide how the major grants um, slice is um, dispersed. Um, there are various rules for who makes up the panel and um, uh, conflicts of interest and things like that. Um, and that's all I'm remembering right now. Uh, did I miss anything, Josh? No, I, th I think the only thing um, that I would I would add that's like slightly specific and one of the things that's up for debate is the um, uh, the community advisory panel would select the you know uh, grants committee uh, and that and that committee would be the one dispersing out major grants and their various. I, little, I, you know, I, I missed out a lot of direction. direction there. But, but yeah, the only reason I mention it specifically is because one of the things that was brought up in the forum discussion around the zip. Was whether that whether that um, there should be that degree of like near complete autonomy with that committee to disperse major grants, or whether it should be, uh, you know, where whether the foundation should have more leeway. Um, and I think the other, I mean, the other key thing, and why I, I made my earlier statement, um, and I think it's important for everyone on this call to know is that um, you know the ECC has made it very clear. Um, uh, that if uh, a cap is included in the zip, that they would uh, uh, that they would uh, decline the community funding, um, and then there's so there's another question uh, about like if if that were the result, like where we redirect funding. Um, but as I said before, my personal hope is that that isn't the result. And uh, there is a, a question on the poll uh, as to whether the cap should be retained or not. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, what, uh, have Hamid. we gone through? Have we gone through all of the options that were on the poll? Because it's probably worth doing that. Um, oh yeah, um, Hamid, why don't you share your thought, and then we'll do as Dara suggested. Yes. Sh sure, and it's actually probably right in line with where Dara's going with this. Um, uh, I'm curious, uh, and this is kind of directed towards um, Josh. Uh, at the foundation, but it may be open for everyone. I, I was just curious if there's been a thought given to the process for uh, determining the funding slices, given there's four options. Uh, I'm just a little curious. It sounds like that could be, I can imagine if there's one point of friction, uh, that, that might be it. And just curious if we've thought about that process, what it might look like and um, how that may be sorted out. Yeah, uh, so, so my, um, it, my, my perspective, uh, and you know, ultimately this is me trying to represent what I think the foundation board uh, will, will want, but I, I think what, uh, what the ideal is, you know, we'll look at the, the selection that has the, uh, the, mo the most votes and count effectively if there's any, you know, if anyone has uh, any vote that's in the any option is uh, acceptable, we would count toward pushing the vote uh, above the sort of fifty percent mark of there being a majority of, uh, of of people that would approve of a given option. So, like, just to say, if it's a hundred, uh, just a hypothetical, if it's like a hundred uh, hundred people vote um, in uh, of the hundred and nineteen that could, uh, and let's say uh, fifty of them vote that any of the above distribution is acceptable. And uh, ECC fifty percent gets um, like thirty of the other votes, and then ECC forty five gets fifteen and uh, ten, and then the remainder. We would, uh, I think, we would view the ECC getting fifty percent as being the one with the most support because it has the most combined. Any option is acceptable plus the majority of of what um, of of what everyone else wanted. So I I think we're just gonna. You know, my view is that we, unless there is some like closeness or contention around that, we're going to go with whatever the straight, uh, you know, the the straight majority would be. I was just wondering about that. So suppose, for example, you get um, uh, the highest two um, options mm -hmm. are thirty five percent and forty five percent, say. Mm. Um, and they both have roughly the same amount. Uh, would you compromise between those and choose forty percent? I, uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I. That's a particular approach. Although I suspect that at that point it might make sense to do another, another more final, final poll. Right. Um, okay. I, I think. Yeah. Josh, can you pull it up on your screen and show everybody, please? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I asked yeah, so, you to do this because it's hard for me to screen share and moderate at the same time. Yeah, and yeah. Now, Ian, you may speak. So I, I think the the question actually is, there's that one, but there's another one because I was just filling out the poll. Uh, mm -hmm. And the answer, the options are basically the ZF thing is fixed. So does ECC get 35%, the rest goes to major, to major grants. Does ECC get 40, 45, or 50%? Um, and clearly if, if like say 50% gets the majority of votes and then everything else is tiny, the choice is easy. But what happens if for example, uh, 35 and 40% together get the majority of the vote uh, and 50% um, gets the second, gets the, has the majority, separately, right? That would seem to see, suggest that most people would have voted for 35% or 40%, but then yeah, they the, got there's a, there's a splitting the vote um, issue here. Um, I, I, I was quite curious as to why we'd chosen uh, single option voting um, for uh, something like this, where you have a continuum of options. I believe Helios um, doesn't support anything else. Is the problem. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah it, it supports a variant of score voting, but um, yeah, that would have been more complicated. Uh, it doesn't support STV. I know that. Well, I think at this point, we can pretty clearly assume that the preferences are linear, right? That like right. You, you wouldn't, for some reason, uh, be in favor of ECC getting 35 or 45, but not 40. 
Um, right. But again, going back to my previous comment, reason. going back to my previous comment, we need to commit to this. Because um, right. yeah. when I was reading this thing, I was like, huh, how should I vote for this? And I was like, wait, also, how am I supposed to interpret this poll result since um, I'm also supposed to do that at some point? So the Zcash Foundation has committed to this. Um, and I believe Josh, uh, either Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, but ECC has also committed to this? Yep, we have. Uh, and I guess community's commitment is sort of hard to measure, and we can, to some degree, measure it by participation. Um, but what you know, the degree to which this is representative is just a really difficult question that we have debated <laughs> at length for months uh, last year, but we could talk about that. I mean, are we doing just straight majority vote? Is that? Uh, yeah, I mean, my, uh, my, my impression is that, uh, uh, um, that we, you know, if, if there is a straight majority winner uh, on that particular question, that's what the that's what the foundation would seek to implement. Um, okay. I think if there's if oh yeah, I mean if there's if there's some like very close division or there there are two options that have like below that threshold. Um, I think that leads to another round of discussion with the ECC and the community about how we ascertain and, and interpret that. But um, I think my 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 hope is whatever you know whatever crosses that fifty percent threshold and has the majority uh, uh, you know the, the largest vote vote number um, for that particular question. Micra, Mikara, sorry, it's gonna. I'm gonna remember that. Uh, Mikara, uh, would you like to elaborate on the thought that you just put in the chat? Uh, for the benefit of everybody, uh, what she said is, at least my vote here actually matters, though. Yeah. So in the chat, people were talking about reinventing democracy. Um. And like I guess in most major democracies nowadays, it's kind of you kind of have to like vote strategically. So you may not vote um, in accordance to what you actually might think is the best vote. Uh, whereas like with the current Zcash community panel, you are definitely voting for what you think is best for Zcash and what like whatever interest you have as well in um, in Zcash. So. Yeah, that at was least it's, at least it's quite a fine grained vote. How do others feel about the vote? Or thoughts on the vote, thoughts on the process? Or I suppose I suppose we should use the word poll. We try to use the word poll, but then you vote in a poll, so it all gets messy. I, all right, I'm gonna fill the dead air. Uh, I'm just here to have thoughts on syntax and try to egg other people on to talk. Which never is never works that well. All right, Matt uh, says. How <laughs> said something in the chat? Ah, the big thing I'm hoping for, which I imagine is the plan, is that the foundation and the ECC are on the same page in the event that things are close, i.e., good lines of communication before things get set in stone. Yeah, just to, to elaborate there, and I, I think imagine it's a plan with everyone. I, I'm just imagining if there's some kind of weird scenario with these four options that um, the, the foundation and the ECC have a chance to maybe talk about that a little bit and hopefully come up with a solution before um, you know we get in a weird situation. So it sounds like that's not an issue and I'm feeling good. Yeah, I think if, if there is any kind of division, or if it looks like that is a, a possibility that there would be confusion over the results of that, or really any of the other questions, but that question in particular, um, I, I can say that I'm. I, I think, you know, we on the foundation would be happy to 
uh, make sure that we in the ECC are aligned and have a conversation with, uh, you know, Zuko and Josh S uh, and uh, and other folks on the ECC to make sure that, uh, like, we are interpreting the results the same way, um, or if if there is a need for another yet another poll. Um, although I, I really hope that won't be the case. I I do have a thought here, as someone who's you know obviously been following this closely, and some degree of uh, an internal view because of working at the foundation, although I haven't been involved in most of the you know direct conversations about this. But uh, Josh S and Josh C and Zuko and others at ECC and others at the foundation have put just a lot, a lot of time into, you know, having these conversations one-on-one -on -one, as well as having them in public and, uh, emotionally wrenching for everyone. I hope they don't mind me saying that. Um, but I, I think everyone is, is, you know, really doing their best to understand everyone else's perspective, which is inherently very, very difficult. <laughs> but uh, I, for one, am, I feel like we've made a huge amount of progress and that sort of slowly and sometimes frustratingly slowly, but but it's it, we've really come to a place where we're we're talking about solutions, and I think we're going to find out how well they work, and then we can adjust from there. So that's my that's my optimistic note. Yeah, I would echo that. It's 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 actually this whole process we've been on has been pretty incredible, and the conversations that we've had even outside of <clears throat> the Zcash community with other communities. Um, this has kind of been the envy in spite of all the friction and the stress and all of that stuff. Um, because there is decentralization, there's decentralization theater, and um, what we're trying to do is really, really hard. Um, and in spite of the different perspectives and things like that that are on the forum, um, we're, you know, we're, we're on this journey together, and, um, and I think the communication lines are, are pretty good. Sarah, go ahead. And farewell, oh, Josh. Other yes, Josh. Fine, Josh. Um, so I, I did have a little bit cons of concern over whether uh, we'll have time before um, the first halving um, to specify and audit and implement and um, have enough time to uh, for third parties to um, to adapt to the consensus rules. Um, I think we're probably fine, um, but it may, um, having to include the dev fund consensus changes um, by that deadline might reduce um, how much else we can put in NU4. Uh, I'm, but I'm not particularly worried about it at this stage. Um, so, uh, Part, Elena partly, asked a question. Um, partly because Sorry, it, seem, it seems as though the consensus rules that we'll need are not particularly complicated, because a lot of the um, the complication in uh, ZIP 1014 is um, uh, organizational stuff that is not reflected in consensus. So um, Elena asked about voter turnout for the most recent poll. And Elena, what, I, what it basically boils down to is emailing people several times. Uh, we try to strike a balance between being annoying and reminding people enough that they you know, really get a chance to, uh, to share their vote <laughs> in the poll. Um, yeah, so th that's pretty much what it is. Uh, if you have suggestions for doing that better, um, I'd actually, Something I would be interested in discussing, although um, if Dara, Dara, if you have thoughts on further thoughts on the timing, uh, I'd be happy for us to go in that direction too. But I think it would be interesting to discuss the our current um, the foundation's community advisory panel and um, whether I don't know how well it's worked so far. What what. Yeah, that I don't know. I'm I'm elaborating on unclear nothing. So if someone has thoughts on that, I would love to hear them for one. 
Um, I, I have thoughts. Um, a, a panel like this can't be fully representative, but um, I haven't really seen many people complaining a lot. There, there were some complaints about um, uh, the uh, the panel being unrepresentative after the first vote. Um, yeah. But I don't know. My, my impression is it's just from a few trolls outside the Zcash community mainly. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't call them trolls. That's uncharitable. But, Critics. But they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I've seen I've seen a few people who I at least consider to be within the community who um, f I don't know felt like it wasn't inclusive enough. Um, but so, so there are, I feel there like is we one kind of did the best we could. <laughs> there is one group Sorry, that ahead. I think may be unrepresented uh, unrepresented so much, and um, that's miners. Um, we don't really know who the miners are anymore. I mean, there's Bitmain um, and in a It's Bitmain. And who else? We don't I know. mean, there there's some there are known mining pools, but they're really hard to get to. Like, they're not very respond. Like, there are a couple of them. Some of the smaller ones are responsive, um, and then some of the other ones, like we've tried to reach out to them and had a hard time actually getting to them, or or like even getting them to notice us <laughs> that we wanted to know what they thought. Mm. Or oh, maybe I, they notice and don't care. It's like it's hard to tell. Yeah, I, I've apologized this for um, before, but I think we should probably have moved to a more ASIC resistant um, algorithm. And the basically the reason we didn't is the the security bug that we fixed in Sapling, and also um, the timing of network upgrades didn't work out. Um, yeah. But, there, there was dependent. a mistake. Uh -huh. Yeah, there was a mistake that um, Strad and I made about the uh, parameters um, when we launched, uh, which is I put my hands up and we shouldn't have made that mistake. Um, but none of these conspiracy theories have any merit. It was purely a mistake. Oh, Dara, it it hurts my heart <laughs> to hear you criticize yourself, given just the <laughs> incredible amount of astute labor that you've. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I did want to say about the uh, community advisory panel. Um, well, dang, it's gone. Well, I don't know. Has anyone, has anyone got something on their mind? Iran, I nominate you to have a thought. All right. Um, and so, you should introduce yourself. I actually did. Oh, you did earlier? All right, never mind. Uh, yeah, I'm the snarky guy. So to the extent that we are uh, using this uh, sponsor sponsorship model, uh, I think uh, we need to hone that process and in particular make it easier to know who's already sponsored. It appears that this time around, we have people who probably got multiple sponsorships and others who were just assumed to already be in the panel and therefore weren't sponsored by anyone. Uh, so that needs a bit of thought. And I uh, also second the sentiment about reaching out to underrepresented people like uh, the miners and others. Oh, that's what I was gonna say about the community advisory panel that um, it's not internationally representative. That is something I think we could, I, I'm not sure how, would be the best way to work on that, but it, I think it would be great to really include more of the, the global Zcash community um, in this process and in the groups that are involved in the process. Um, but Iran, also, can you uh, specify what you mean when you say sponsor? Uh, the part where you are allowed to bring one friend to join the panel. Oh, yes. Uh, Justin Ehrenhofer has just arrived. Hello, everyone. Although, Mostly just listening today. Yeah. Uh, we're sort of in a free-form discussion phase, so if you do have thoughts, um, you know, we'd be happy to hear them. Cool, thanks. <laughs> All right. 
Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm like I'm still at work, so. Uh, oh no, <laughs> well, no yeah. worries. Uh, um, we we could talk about the merch of the zip. We could we could actually go through it line by line if we wanted to. <laughs> do we want that? to? Yeah, <laughs> do we want to is the question. So I think I'm I'm not getting the vibe that people have a burning <laughs> need to discuss right now. Uh, so. Uh, can can people register their opinions on whether? Uh, oh, Makara notes that one way to um, make this process more accessible would be to translate the poll into different languages, and there are problems with this, of course. Uh, do you mean in terms of like uh, syntax and meaning? I like the idea of translating the poll. That seems like a good idea. Although first we'd have to, it might be better to translate a lot of other things first. Although I, the z.cache has been translated into many languages, um, which is awesome. I don't think translating the poll would help since almost all of the discussion and debates around it and such are in English, unfortunately. So unless we translate all of that, it would be a, be a fig leaf. We could say we have a bunch of people involved, but you couldn't meaningfully participate in the community in that sense. Hmm. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think that the poll itself is um, something that people can easily translate for themselves. Uh, machine translation is quite good these days. Um, uh, but yeah, you wouldn't be able to translate all of the debate around it. Um, and just to point out to, to Iran's comment, you can't translate the zip, actually, right? Because one of the copies has to be authoritative. And so you're at best hoping yeah. that uh, the translations are faithful, but there will be disagreements. And when there is a disagreement, uh, there has to be a canonical copy. Um, Agreed. So it, it's a mess. Is this translation issue and sort of the surrounding that there's so much context and discussion that, I mean, even if you had perfect machine translation for everything, just the volume would be difficult to go through? Um, you know, go, going through and translating everything to even find out whether it was signal rather than noise. Um, maybe this is part of why miners uh, don't try to, I don't know, optimize, optimize the, the governance of different projects for their purposes. I mean, I don't feel, do others feel that miners have really tried to, so far? They, they have in Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin and its fork. Um, I, I mean, immediate forks like uh, uh, Bitcoin Cash and SV mm -hmm. and that stable of things. Um, yeah, I'm actually, given that as a, a, a template, uh, I'm kind of glad that we don't have that kind of acrimony um, between Zcash miners and Zcash protocol designers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like if the miners want to be hands off or maybe want is not the right word, but it's sort of in a economic revealed preferences kind of framework. If, if in that framework, if the miners want to be hands off, like I'm okay with that, you know, they can, they can participate in that, in that, you know, to the extent that they want to and not further, and that's fine with yeah. me. I, I've, I've said before, miners have a specific um, role in the protocol. Um, they're there to order blocks, basically. Um, and that's almost all they're there for. Um, so, yeah, we give yeah. them money, but... Um, I, prefer, I, I, I prefer... I I actually, I actually um, would have favored even having a dev fund of more than 20%. Mm. But I think the consensus of the rest of the community was that 20% is a cap. But on the other hand, you, the the absolute amount is halving. Um, so it's, is it actually enough money to fund development? I'm not sure. That yeah, that it is the big. On the price. Yeah. That is the big hard question and sort of the inherent gamble. Of, of choosing any specific numbers, there's there's going to be some kind of gamble in it, and we can't get away from that. Yeah, I mean, if if we'd chosen twenty five percent or thirty five 
uh, or thirty percent, then from a minus point of view, the the difficulty adjusts, um, and you end up with uh, fewer minors or lower hash power. But um, it's not that um, it it becomes unprofitable because the Mining, by definition, because of the difficulty adjustment, always has a small marginal profit. Mm -hmm. uh, we could, <laughs> so we could either um, just close the call and everyone can get back to whatever else they have going on, or we could uh, seg into a sort of general Zcash discussion. Um, I'm going to leave it open for everyone to register their opinion. And I'm going to count lack of opinion registering as I have this open in a tab, but I'm not really listening. I'm fine with doing a couple of minutes of Zcash discussion, but I think this will probably peter out by six of the latest. All right. Um, uh, well, uh, if anyone has a Zcash topic they want to talk about, go ahead, or I can prompt one. You have like five seconds to say something. Halo, Halo is great. Um, Halo so, is great. Yeah, the the um, the benchmarks are looking excellent. In fact, the benchmarks are looking good enough that we could almost, I think, uh, drop it into the existing protocol. Not entirely sure about that, but um, for for all those people who um, don't like trusted setups and think that. Um, we should get rid of them as soon as possible. Um, it is actually pretty feasible. Uh, what else needs to be figured out first or um, so, tested? Oh, We're, I should have I should have mentioned a caveat there. So, Halo is optimized for recursive validation. So you have um, a more expensive um, validation cost, but that can be validating multiple um, proofs. Um, so if you want to switch to Halo, you, you would basically have to use the recursive validation, which is a lot of, um, design work. Um, but from a performance point of view, um, it, it's possible. I shouldn't really have said that it's a drop-in replacement because it's not. Oh, you didn't quite say that. I think you hedged. Yeah, I always hedge. <laughs> Ian, what are the general Zcash topics that have been on your mind lately? Well, I think the, the question we have to ask ourselves is, you know, what are the biggest barriers to adoption? Is it really trusted setup? I mean, that would suggest that we should do Halo. Is it other things involving usability, uh, interoperability with other platforms, um, speed of, of transaction generation, right? What are the actual things that are preventing us from, from getting adoption is it scalability right so we have to have a should have some of this community a discussion about priorities and figuring out what's going on because i think we can all agree that you know zcash isn't where we want it to be yet uh i think there are two barriers but this is my personal thought um one is usability of specifically shielded zcash like transparent zcash is pretty easy to use it's accessible on mobile um shielded zcash on mobile is like so close. I'm so excited uh, about the most recent, uh, the ECC SDKs and such. Um, so that should be coming soon. I can't wait to have a, an iPhone app that I can use Shielded Zcash with. Um, and then the other thing is actually, this is kind of brutal, but I would say demand, like just the existence of demand. <laughs> um, I think there are things that we can do about uh, but it is a hard problem. If Josh Swihart is still here, I would um, love to hear his thoughts. Oh, and Decentralist Dan in, um, in the chat said, now that the discussion is open, I'm wondering, does anyone have specific thoughts on Matt Luongo's thesis team being one of the recipients of funds? Um, so we have a lot uh, on the table for people to respond to at this moment. Hi, uh, Sandy, can I just jump in on your thought? Go ahead. Uh, along the same lines, I think uh, in the short term, like in the next six months, I think just hardware wallet, 
uh, show the transactions on hardware wallets could really lead to a tipping point um, within the network for shielded. Like I'm sure there's a lot of people with a lot of Zek that would love to have a hardware solution and, and that would that could really change things. So I know that the foundation's working on that. That'll be great. And I think that, yeah, it could be a big deal. I, I'm, I'm one of them. I basically refuse to um, use um, Zcash without using a hardware wallet. Um, so uh, yeah, that's a, that limits how I can, how I can use shielded. That's a really good point because I think if you have hardware wallets and also threshold signatures, then you can have this like, we're the Swiss bank of cryptocurrency, right? It's, it's private and secure versus right now it is really a take pick one or the other. You don't get both, um, which is a scary choice to have to make. Viewing keys are another thing that people are excited about, but which are, uh, as it stands, hard to use. <laughs> um, hard to use may even be understating things. Actually, Dara, do you do you have any thoughts on that or anyone really? Um, the, there are a couple of PRs um, to improve that situation. And it's just a matter of us getting around to um, to integrating them. Mm. Um, so I, I think so. There's an issue with um, some of the core designers, and I include myself among this, um, thinking that that basically something is done once it's in the protocol, um, and that is very much not the case. Uh, and we we've, we've realised that, um, but we need to double down on actually getting the things that are supported. And that this includes um, hardware wallets as well um, into people's hands. Um, Only so much think, bandwidth, I think right? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's partly because things are so difficult to get into the protocol. Uh, I mean, Sapling was a, a Herculean effort um, and it was, it was over complexity budget basically. Um, uh, but we managed it anyway, um, and then we were completely sunk uh, out after doing that, basically. Um, so I think adding things at a more steady pace and um, implementing them fully is the model that we want to follow for future protocol improvements. Um, but that, but we do have to include the thing to do that for the things that are already in the protocol first. So there is a difficulty here, and this uh, goes back to the whole DEF fund discussion, where, I mean, you already feel, uh, I, I think, I, as if I understand correctly from your comments on the forum, that uh, Zcash as a, like Zcash as an engineering project is understaffed, right? And yes, now- I, do. I, I think that very strongly. Um, can you maybe expand on that? So um, you need to, to get everything we want to do done. Um, you need to have people working on different features in parallel. You need to have enough. It, every person has to have enough spare bandwidth to be able to um, uh, do reviews and security analysis um, and responding to things that come off at short notice um, as well as um, basic programming um, and we don't have enough people to do that we're, we're trying to hire more people um, that's been a um, something we've been concentrating on um, quite a bit recently um, but it, it costs money to pay people obviously mm -hmm. And that is one of the biggest limiting factors in how many people we can hire. So hmm, there is I, there's a sort of inherent conflict here between the, and uh, I know that Josh Weihart has also noted this or has been thematically related things on the forum between just the huge ambition of the project um, of of what. Uh, generalizing of what we all want Zcash to be and what we we want what we want it to be uh, able to enable, if that makes sense, and then this sort of uh, budgeting process. Um, mm -hmm. th there's a tension between these two things, and and they sort of they diverge in a way, really. Like I think something has to give, right? Like and mm -hmm. this is just my personal thought, but like either you can have the crazy ambition. Or you can have the uh, constrained budget, and but it's well, really 
we we scaled back a lot what was what has been in um uh and uh, nu2 and nu3 so blossom and um heartwood um and do you feel like given the, uh, given the time scale we're probably gonna have to scale back what's in nu4 um go on sonia uh i guess with that scaling back has development been more sustainable for you all than uh it was say for sapling like i know that you couldn't all do you couldn't do continuous sapling push level of stress and work all the time because you it would just be impossible yeah well i mean we're, we're gonna have to do um some if we want to do scaling uh which i certainly do um that's going to be a big upgrade with lots of design work but I think we're probably going to do it differently. We're not going to um, uh, push it to um, mainnet all at once like we did for Sapling. Um, so that we're going to have to um, implement it on the testnet uh, and stage it into to stages where we upgrade some um, discrete part of the protocol that can be upgraded on its own, like the, um, the network protocol or um changing how um uh, changing the circuit in preparation for a later change um so we can do that um but it's the there's also a time constraint in that um other projects are integrating um zero knowledge proofs um and other privacy approaches so we're, we're competing with that all the time we have to stay relevant Hmm. Yeah. Does anyone have Cybercoin World privacy effort thoughts? If Makara is still here, I know you've been following that closely. I have a question for the Zcash Foundation. Um, in general, if, if there's no other topics. Uh, go ahead. Uh, sure. So, like, um, for the for 2020, the Zcash Foundation outlined network analysis as one of its main priorities to focus on for the privacy concerns with network analysis. And I was curious if that related to uh, the current Turnstile tool research into the effectiveness of the Turnstile tool. Um, is is anyone able to comment on efforts that are you know currently ongoing on that networking side, and then also if they are related to um, any projects to assess the turnstile tools effectiveness? Send me an email and I'll connect you to Chelsea. She's been working on the networking stuff um, and would be able to speak to it in detail, which I certainly cannot. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, sorry I mean, that I, I can't do that off the cuff. Oh, Dara actually <laughs> might be able to though. <laughs> so I was, gonna, um, I was gonna say, I was hoping that some researchers would just pick up the um, migration tool and, and try and poke holes in it. But that, I, to my knowledge, that hasn't really happened. Uh, and maybe we need to um, to give some researchers a nudge or even fund them to do that. Mikera, if you're willing, um, you have a, an eager audience here for your thoughts. Hmm. Well, Andre. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sonia. Um, I'd actually like to jump in here to uh, circle back on the uh, shielded conversation that we were having a second ago. Um, for, for anyone that's not aware, I lead business development at ECC, and uh, I manage a lot of our partnerships around, um, around the ecosystem, and in particular, uh, getting many of these uh, companies or projects to implement shielded. What I will say about this is that um, I am optimistic that this year we will see meaningful progress towards uh, shielded adoption across a number of different wallets, exchanges, and custodians. Um, I, I think just to summarize uh, the state of this, it really comes down to um, three main factors. I'd say the first is regulatory, and so uh, really working with them to uh, demonstrate that uh, you can have uh, private 
uh, shielded Zcash transactions and still be compliant. And so working with the necessary regulatory bodies uh, really around the world to help our partners understand how this fits into the ecosystem. The second is engineering support. And so making sure that uh, we understand the uh, technical integration challenges to help uh, the various engineering teams to actually implement Shielded. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of our partners use uh, different systems. And so uh, there's a lot of uh, challenges to really just get everyone on the same page and, and rally everyone around that. Um, and then the lastly would be just operational. And so really just um, working to make sure that Zcash Shielded support is on their roadmap. And the biggest thing that I can say about this is uh, the, feedback, the feedback that I get is really around, um, you know, what is the opportunity set and the business case in order for these companies to prioritize putting Shielded support on the roadmap. And so I think that the biggest thing that I would like to leave all of you with is really just, um, well, well, a one is really a request for feedback for you know where you would like to see Shielded support. And so as I'm working with various companies uh, around the ecosystem, understanding you know where you would like to spend your Zcash or store your Zcash or anything, um, any of the, the, the companies or projects that you would like to see uh, shielded support, uh, let me know, and I can help to uh, you know speak to the the teams uh, about that. And also, you know, my request it would be to speak to those teams directly, because I think it's one thing for um, you know me as a member of the ECC to make the case for uh, these companies to support shielded, but the biggest thing is that they are going to ultimately uh, take feedback from what they are hearing from their users about the demand. And so I think that if you know there's additional uh, companies or projects that you would like to see show the support, you know, my sense is that they are generally receptive to conversations that, that their teams are having, conversations on Twitter. And um, you know, if they're not seeing demand for it, then uh, then then they'll let me know that. But but if um, as a community we can be more vocal about uh, adding that capability as something that would actually drive usage to those platforms. And I think they'll be receptive. And I think they'll be that much more likely to uh, integrate it moving forward. Andre, can I just ask you, what sort of arguments have been most effective when you're reaching out to these uh, different you know, parts of the easy catch ecosystem encouraging them to focus on fully shielded? So one of the biggest things that um, I think is effective to date is that um, you know whoever is the uh, you know the companies that are going to integrate it uh, over the next few months and in, in 2020, I think that there will be a considerable uh, first mover advantage. And so you can imagine how if there is a major wallet or custodian exchange, any sort of commercial partner that will accept it, um, I believe that users of the Zcash community will be more inclined to uh, store their Zcash with a trusted custodian that has shielded support. And so just in terms of making the business case, um, be being a first mover advantage and offering that capability to our ecosystem, I think um, can help demonstrate the benefits uh, and, and make the, the uh, opportunity set a little bit more clear for them. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I mean, people use Zcash because of Shielded, right? Uh, I mean, some people use it to speculate, but um, I, I guess in the bear markets, um, not as important as it was. Um, right. Makera, are you still are you still up to talk about Cybercoin privacy efforts? Uh, yeah, so this was before Andre went on uh, about shielded support. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of support in other chains for mixers. Um, even though Ian Myers has gone on um, gone on educating people about like the risks on using mixers, Justin as well, there's still a lot of support for those. 
Um, I think that's mainly just because um, Bitcoin and Ethereum have a large market capitalization and all our projects are built on them. Um, and then they also have like the most visibility. Um, and so it's much harder to have people transfer over to um, like Zcash when everything is being built on like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So yeah, it's kind of hard to see like a, without without like something like TZEC becoming major, I think the more popular option will be just like these retrofitting systems to add privacy, which is quite unfortunate because they do lack, uh, they do leak a lot of metadata data about transactions and yeah, I'd... you have to like run all of your transactions, like every single one of them through a mixer to get like any sort of privacy and it makes for like terrible user experience. Um, not to mention like, like a lot of wallets tend to just leave um, the onus on the user and users want what's convenient, not what's actually best in terms of privacy. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of unfortunate that's the, the direction that's going in, but I kind of understand why. If you have like business requirements um, and those business requirements are, are more important, you probably want to go with those versus like what's the best option. Yeah. Yeah, people make trade-offs. When I think, uh, and then honestly, the like um, just mixers complicate our business requirements. Like I work for a you know prop trading firm, and if someone's trying to use a mixer, it 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 doesn't simplify our business requirements. It doesn't, it, it just complicates them in every way because then we need to check with all of our partners. It's just a, a real pain. Yeah, I agree. Um, I currently run um like my my own business, and I'm worry. I, I'm very like wary of using any mixers for this very reason, because I don't want to be like implicated at tax time because I'm trying to like run something lawful, but like at the end of the day, a mixer is definitely just a laundry, laundering um, service. And even if you're trying to protect your privacy and you're not doing anything wrong, it just come off like as being very illegal. Um, Dara, you had a thought? Yeah, uh, um, I would be actually uh, even harsher uh, towards um, people and projects that are, are pushing mixers as a privacy solution um, because the, they, um, they're just a fig leaf, basically. Um, the, they're, not, they're not hiding the transaction graph against any serious attack. Um, yeah, Ian has explained um, why this is, um, but I think Perhaps sometimes the Zcash community is too polite um, and it is unwilling to criticize other projects. Um, and I see the reasons for that. I mean, the, the, some of the, the discourse between other um, coins is quite toxic and we don't really want to get involved in that, but I think we have to make the case very strongly that um, you need the large um, anonymity sets that, um, that Zcash gives you. Now, Ian, I bet you have something to say about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a very good point that a bunch of projects are making anonymity things. And tragedy one is that, of course, there are, a lot of them are somewhat broken. Tragedy two is just, and I've watched this with, say, the Aztec people. They're just like literally sitting, going through and reinventing all of the work that I did like in 2013. Right? It's like, we've done this. You shouldn't have to reinvent the wheel. At least go take the existing wheel we built and just drop it in somewhere. Um, and so I think one of the things we, we really should work on is allowing people to convert like Ethereum, uh, ERC 20s, Bitcoin, like take them, drop them onto Zcash, move them around privately, and then move them back over to your own chain. So you can be like the privacy layer for sending stuff, right? So if you support like custom assets on the Zcash chain, you can allow people to have private versions of the ERC 20s. They won't do anything funny on Zcash, right? You can just transfer them, but whenever you want to go back and get them to like do whatever crypto kitties things they do or something, then you use them non anonymously on the current chain, on the Ethereum chain. Yeah, I, I mean, that approach is strictly better than um, doing mixes or any kind of um, layer two um, approach on the original train. So the uh, issue with like enabling like ERC-20s is that it's kind of unscalable and it adds like extra load to the Zcash chain. So you kind of have to be careful about enabling sort of private assets on top of zero, zero cash or 
I well, don't actually think we have a scaling problem yet. And if we hit one, I, I would that would be a better problem to have than the current one, right? Of of lacking adoption, right? Like that's that's a good problem to have. Things are are slow because fees go up because there are too many people using your product. I mean, we we did decide to do scaling before um, programmability, uh, but partly for technical reasons and partly because I, I think programmability without scaling is a dead end. Um, but we didn't decide to do um, scaling before these kind of um, wrapped solutions or um, uh, uh, used to find tokens. Um, so we could do those in parallel. And I think it makes sense to do that. Uh, I don't think we have to solve the scaling problem first. Well, uh, Decentralist Dan says, would like to note that custom assets on Zcash and what Ian just mentioned is directly related to my earlier comment in regards to the thesis team getting funding. And Cody Burns says, wrapped Zach should be able to use the XCAT work. Um, since Dan asked about it again, does anyone have thoughts on thesis or what thesis is interested on in doing with respect to Zcash? Uh, I do. I, I thought they had a reasonable proposal and they were proposing to uh, to get too much money for it. Um, but it's, it's not it's not my decision to decide how much money they get for it. But you are, you know, at perfect liberty to have an opinion, mm -hmm. of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think in general we need to um, be skeptical and um sort of consider um is it try and get value for money for the dev funds um because a lot a lot of what thesis was proposing was actually just an application of um stuff that we'd already worked out at ecc um so sapling was designed to um support a particular approach to um user defined assets um, without much additional effort. Um, that's, I think that was basically what um, uh, thesis was also going to do. So under the um, whoever thinks of a thing gets to implement it rule, that <laughs> would suggest that ECC should do it. But uh, yeah. Iran. So I haven't actually reviewed the thesis proposal yet. Uh, was kind of focusing on the higher level dev fund considerations, but I do have a high level consideration about uh, the existing participants, namely uh, ECC, the foundation, and the current grant recipients. And I would like to pose the question of the current level of their transparency, uh, both at the level of the uh, corporate and financial, and especially the level of the uh, flight plans and roadmaps. Uh, what do the people on this call uh, think about the current uh, level of reporting uh, and both in terms of future plans and accountability for past ones? Uh, so I think that's probably um, Josh's, uh, Josh Feihut's um, bag on the ECC side to comment on that. Sorry to drop uh, you in there, yeah. so, Well, I think it's a, a broader question for the community um, as to whether or not we are um, delivering what the community needs or expects. Does ECC make many grants? I know you've done some Gitcoin stuff, like with the, um, the EIP. Uh, no, we're not, we're not um, actively making grants. It's just sort of like if a one-off thing comes up that makes sense. Well, so um, I think the, the broader question, and correct me if I'm wrong, was whether or not ECC or the foundation or anybody else in terms of the roadmaps that we're providing and the transparency that we're providing on the use of funds is sufficient for what the community needs. Is that fair? Is that what you're looking for, Ron? Uh, yep, this or any other comments on the ongoing publications? Yeah, so it'd be useful I, for us, like from the community, on like whether or not the transparency, you know, the, the transparency reports that we're producing um, are are good and sufficient and providing enough detail, and whether 
you know, that some of the roadmap documents that we're producing is doing the same. Uh, we started doing live streams recently and whether that's useful or not, uh, getting that feedback would be really helpful for us as well. Yeah, what do people think? I'm also I, I know, extremely interested I know there in have that. Been, there have been some comments on the forum basically complaining about um, the fact that uh, there's not much transparency in ECC's owners. Um, now, I, I understand completely uh, that there are privacy issues there. Uh, um, we can't just tell everyone who the owners are and the, the proportions. Uh, and we, we've been more transparent on that than, um, than the vast majority of private companies. Um, but there still seems to be this perception that because we're we're asking for funds from the blockchain that we should be more transparent about that specifically. I, I, I'm happy to, to jump in here. Go for it. Um, so yeah, my you know my background is kind of more from the Ethereum community. Um, I think that the ECC is probably the most transparent company that I can think of in the entire uh, industry, I want to say, and I, I could be wrong, but uh, maybe, maybe someone could think of something else. I, I'm, I'm constantly impressed by it. Um, I actually think I usually have an easier time finding information from the ECC than I do sometimes um, from the foundation, and specifically like board meetings and minutes for the foundation. I would think that would be really easy to find. Uh, oh. I think I need to probably just like look harder. Um, um, I have, I've improved that recently and I will fully cop to it being hard to find um, before and it may actually still be, uh, but if you, here, I'm going to drop you a link. You can find pretty much all documents here. Uh, like they will be linked to somewhere on that page and then you will be able to get to other pages that have more documents. Uh, yeah, for example, here are the board minutes. And this is this is a very recent improvement. So um, I am also like feedback on this is welcome. Cool. No, I appreciate that. I'll check it out. But um, yeah, I, I would think the next frontier for everyone is um, it's going to be a lot of financial granularity, like almost you would imagine like a public company or or other nonprofits just providing that level of detail where it's pretty clear how all the dollars are being spent, um, as I imagine, just going to be important going forward. I think that, so the ECC transparency reports are not dissimilar to like a, some, well, at least some of the information you get from a 10K, definitely not the same, like, you know, separated out differently. But uh, Josh, is that the inspiration or how do you, how do you yeah. think about what to put into those reports and, um, you know, how to present the information and everything? Well, I mean, we, so we, we initially kind of framed it to be as close as we could with the public disclosure or like of, um, of what a, a company would do, not so much 10K, but um, but it was really important. One is like, what is the level of granularity that is appropriate for, for giving information without, um, uh, to Dara's point, in some cases, revealing um, private information related to individuals. Um, mm -hmm. And so what is the right balance of that? And then making sure that we adequately communicate what we have used the funds for. So the community has a sense of whether or not and can make decisions on whether or not we are, um, I mean, not maybe make decisions, but form opinions on if the use of funds are appropriate uh, and can provide that feedback if we're getting the kind of results that the, the community is expecting. So that's, that's really an intent. I think uh, there's also an inherent difficulty in pre-committing. Uh, uh, certainly personal experience on the past year, year and a half or so uh, at the foundation is that it's, it's really hard to get something done at a specific time um, <laughs> because com there's complexity that is difficult to anticipate. There are inherent unknowns. Um, other things come up. Uh, just forecasting is very, very difficult. And um, commitment on what you're going to do in the future necessarily involves forecasting. And that's uh, even even with hedging and even with talking about intentions and current plans, um, sometimes, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just difficult. I guess that's my thought there. Yeah. 
that's so, so much so that um, it's forecasting um, engineering um, milestones it is notoriously no one does it right. <laughs> no, no one can do this in the whole um, computing industry. Um, so it, it shouldn't be surprising that we get it wrong sometimes. But we're trying to do a better job. So we went through, oh, yeah. and we'll share more yeah. at the, like an upcoming live stream um, that will be here in early February. But we like moved to an OKR process, uh, which is fairly standard um, in setting some uh, quarterly objectives for our various teams and then working to keep ourselves accountable for those objectives. Um, I, I'm actually uh, very optimistic about the OKR process. Uh, the, that stands for um, uh, objectives and key results, by the way. Iran, go ahead. So um, <clears throat> I note that the major grantees uh, will be expected to uh, be project in the plan and uh, make the, a, some level of commitment to their best assessment of their uh, engineering schedule. Um, and uh, clearly um, things will change along the way. And uh, I ex assume that the uh, committee or whoever the system is set up in charge of um, a, of tracking these and of course the committee in charge of a renewing major grants will be accommodating to well justify changes but still this is a pretty high bar I would dare say higher bar than uh, the foundation and ECC have been held to in terms of uh, making this kind of uh, future looking uh, commitments the actually ECC made great headway with the recent flight plan um, the uh, horizon one, uh, six month horizon, uh, and especially the three month part of it, had falsifiable metrics um, that that was really good to see. Um, but then it sort of fizzles out as we go further, especially as we go further into the, the dev fund uh, time scale. Um, so I wonder what, as a community, we should be expecting given the difficulties, but also the necessity of actual long term planning. I think that I, I think that ultimately there's no substitute for human judgment. And as you say, like making a good faith, best effort guess, um, you know, sort of a, a supported guess, a guess, like ideally a guess with some metrics, <laughs> um, although metrics have their own uh, clusters of problems that arise with them. Uh, but yeah, there's no substitute for human judgment in deciding you know who should do the work uh you know what what like what kinds of commitments they should make and how granular those commitments can be and you know how much wiggle room there should be and like i think it's ultimately going to come down to human decisions i think and also this whole dev fund debate has really driven that home for me as we've gone over like all these different configurations of ways to make a decision all these different configurations of of ways to allocate funding and uh it's pretty much impossible to have it not ultimately come down to some humans making some choices. Dara, go ahead. Um, so what do we think in general about the degree of um, uh, bureaucracy? Uh, that, 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 that's a kind of a negative word, but um, what do people think about the balance between um, process and uh, sort of allowing the ECC and ZF to just use their own judgment on how to use funds in the current ZIP 1014? Iran, go ahead. So I think the easy part of the answer is that there are parts of the bureaucracy or process that are needed anyway, right? Long-term engineering planning, setting clear goals, justifying them to ourselves within an organization, um, and getting the engineer buying on the feasibility of these goals and so forth. This would happen in anyway, right? That is sane planning. And to the extent that it happened anyway, I have a few qualms about requiring them to be public as part of the community expectations. I agree. Um, uh, the hard part is to what extent uh, would be be willing to pay for overheads for extra stuff that is 
that wouldn't be needed uh, if scrutiny were not a consideration, but it is, so it is. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I would rather minimize that. So there would need to be good reasons uh, and uh, plausible uh, danger uh, in order to uh, instate uh, onerous demands on, on any performer to go beyond the things that they need to do anyway. Because the Zcash I, Foundation is already a nonprofit, I think this is less of a concern for us than it is for other organizations, well, like ECC, for example, but also others who are maybe considering whether they might participate in something like this, that we already have both a legal mandate and a sort of set, like we have, you know, we have the, the set of like administrative accoutrement that you need to do this stuff because we have to as a nonprofit, it's like integral to our existence. And I think it's much more difficult for say a startup to put that kind of thing in place and have just all the attendant process and culture around it. I know that's but, vague and wishy-washy, but. Well, it, it took you a long time to set that up, right? Um, Cause yes. um, it, it took a while to get um, the foundation um, up and running and um, being productive. Um, partly and like, because of those requirements. And like our, you know, some of our stuff comes out on a year long delay. Like our, I think our audits are made public on at least a year, maybe a two year delay. I can't remember that off the top of my head, but our, um, our 990 is on a year delay just because like, that's what the IRS process is, so. <laughs> yeah, so, so maybe some of those nonprofit requirements aren't actually sufficient um to give the community uh, the transparency they want yeah i think that may be true um and with our we do our state of the foundation thing which has uh, a fair bit of budget information and spending information in it um but you know it i think it is up for debate and the community can you know sort of weigh in on whether we're doing what is um whether we're doing enough or whether we should do more i think there are plan like a sort of dream level of transparency is being able to do it all with Zcash and viewing keys, but that's probably <laughs> always off uh, as a practical solution. Yeah, we, we should implement programmability now so that we can uh, have a decentralized organization. Um, <laughs> uh, the blockchain shall be law. Um, any oh. security bugs uh, features. <laughs> Can a DAO hold a trademark? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm kind of subtweeting a, um, a certain other chain there. <laughs> uh, I would just like to add one more thing to my uh, earlier answer and call out um, the new OKR process that Zikas is doing as a really good example of the, some, of an internal process being exposed through the uh, flight plan. Uh, to the public, that was extremely valuable, and I hope that it will be updated on an ongoing basis. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. All right. Well, I think that we have talked ourselves out. If anyone, uh, all right, there's a, oh, uh, Zcon 2, um, we hope to have the application open on January 30th. It's our current target date. Uh, see my earlier comments on pre-commitment. Oh, uh, Justin, go ahead with your unrelated question. Let's hear it. Okay, cool. There's might be some background noise. Um, this is mostly a question for Josh, who talked about adding um, some D5 functionalities uh, to Zcash. And I believe it was stated that uh, there would be some privacy properties. So I just want some elaboration in terms of what type of privacy that can be expected um, as these systems are built out would like the amounts be hidden how, how does this sort of work because i i guess from my perspective it's just a big question mark for me and I, I just want some clarification yeah hey um so the the i don't believe that i articulated there would necessarily be any privacy related um Capabilities kind of out of the out of the gate. Part of this is we're looking at a, a little bit of a crawl walk run, and we want to enable through um, uh, through things like flight client or 
<clears throat> to be able to uh, for third parties to be able to build on top of uh, uh, to build on top of Zcash. I fully expect like um, like uh, if Tzek gets de developed or something like that, that it will start with transparent addresses. I think there's a lot to solve with 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 zaders. Um, but uh, it will it will evolve over time. I know Nathan's got some um, kind of very specific ideas on how this might evolve and how we can support third parties and moving towards um, moving towards privacy. And then part of it is like it, you know you can have uh, Zcash stored in a in a zadder and then um, potentially move it out into. Um, uh, you know, into a, a contract or something that can be used in DeFi, but uh, there's there's the stuff that we're we're building right now is is more about enablement of third parties than it is around uh, trying to figure out exactly uh, kind of the solutions that are going to sit on top. And some of it is like Bolt, so <laughs> Bolt is part of Bolt is part of it as well. So more expressive um, a kind of contracting ability or scripting ability. Uh, so that like Bolt uh, at a layer two can can add that. So there, I guess in that case, there is some uh, some privacy related things, but um, but it's pretty broad. I mean, the, so so um, I shouldn't yeah. expect uh, <laughs> like uh, being able to lend and borrow with the addresses at least initially. At, at least initially, I wouldn't I wouldn't think so. I mean, ultimately. Uh, you know, a thesis or Summa or somebody like that comes along and, and builds that capability, awesome. Uh, or, you know, if that kind of stuff gets built to the Cosmos, awesome. I think the Cosmos team is working on that. Uh, but, um, but I would expect that's going to take some time to get it right. So, so the I guess one of my concerns then is if, uh, you know, all these systems are continuously built on the transparent layer. Um, I mean, I, I, you know, I know there's probably a bunch of realistic concerns in terms of, you know, this might not be scalable, like it might not work, but my, I guess my main concern is that if it's all these new systems are built only on the transparent layer, I, like how do you expect people to really adopt shielded ZEC if, if you're, like if, if they can have transparent ZEC and then they can, like, uh, you know, lend it out for economic profit. Um, Dara. So, so I share that concern. Um, one thing we, so when we've been designing the, or when I've been designing the scalability proposal, I have been thinking about um, how to make it private as well. Uh, sorry, uh, how to make it programmable as well. Um, and that kind of programmability, uh, which, which fits very well into using um, a recursive proofs, um, would basically let you do anything that you can do so, um, on Ethereum privately. I think I think several things are going to be completed here. Um, there are three questions. One, um, when you do say Ethereum or Bitcoin to Zcash, does it land you uh, in transparent or shielded addresses? Um, in fact, does it just tend to cause you to use transparent addresses more than shielded? And I think that's deeply concerning if it does, and we should try to avoid that as much as possible. Great. But on the other side, um, it doesn't actually, from a privacy perspective, it doesn't actually matter uh, whether it lands you in shielded or transparent, because the other side of the chain, the Bitcoin or Ethereum is gonna be transparent anyway, so you know the value in the owner, right? So it only matters in terms of what it causes you to sit in long-term on the Zcash side of it. And thirdly, then there's this question about, yes, you could have private programmability, but having done a, a fair amount of work on this subject. It's not clear what that actually means and where the data lives. And a lot of applications actually want data to be public. So that's a third completely different point. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm not underestimating the challenges that it's a hard problem. Well, no, it's not, it's not that it's a hard problem. It's actually literally not clear that it's a problem you actually want to solve. Some things actually like depend on the data. Like a, a smart contract is like, think of it as like an Amazon Web API. Right, where anybody should be able to come up and make a, a call to the API and cause it to do something. But if it's literally anybody you can come up and make the call to the API, then all the data that that API call depends on has to be public and available because anybody should be able to run it. Right? So when you start talking about right. privacy preserving contracts, you end up talking about things where actually it's a contract that's only visible to a subset of people or where you can get attestations about things, but it, it's a different computational model in a way that's so, like, so sort of you, weird. 
if you think about the work that Agoric is doing, all of the um, uh, work is capability-based. So um, it, you need a capability to um, a contract in order to invoke it. Um, and that seems to be the right model to start with to me. Um, yeah, so, so it would only be the um, uh, people who have um, that capability that um, would need to the auxiliary data. Yeah, I get my question was broad. I'm, I'm sorry for conflating that. Um, I guess the main point I wanted to ask um, is if the addition of this feature sh should be a concern for the other initiatives to support fully shielded use. I guess that's that's the main point I wanted to get across. I mean, yes, I think that is a legitimate concern. Yeah, uh, speaking purely we, for myself, it, it definitely is a concern. Yeah, uh, we have to consider it on a case-by-case -case basis for each feature um, because the, the features are very different in that respect. Well, I think we're going to wrap up now. Thank you all for participating. This has been an interesting discussion and a pretty chill one, actually. Um, this will be on YouTube either later tonight or tomorrow. And uh, if you're on the community advisory pa panel, please uh, vote in the poll. Um, uh, and don't vote in the coin weighted poll. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if oh. you do, vote saying. Yes, please do not. <laughs> vote saying we should disregard the results if you're going to vote at all. <laughs> oh, Matt, we were just about to wrap up. Do you have any? Oh, wait, actually, no, I keep forgetting this. Michael Harms, are you listening? Are you here? Hey, yeah, what's up? Um, talk about Zek Mailer. Oh, uh, OK, so hi, I'm Michael Harms. I am a reformed English major and a humble Lambda School student. Um, around the time that I was learning how to do web development, I wanted to apply it to something cool, and I made a tool to send shielded memos to a number of recipients called Zek Mailer. You can get there at zekmailer.com. And uh, it was a lot of purposes. One, I wanted to be able to uh, be a mysterious artist and spam people. And the other thing is I kind of wanted to stress test Zcash and get more shielded um, messages out there. Um, it was a really cool experience, and uh, I like it a lot. Did you have any questions in particular? Uh, yeah, Decentralist Dan, are you still here? Let's give him a minute to type something in the chat. Uh, I will say that I have loved getting lots of uh, shielded memos with all kinds of interesting esoteric poetry and ship posting and sci-fi and um, sometimes just like anonymous notes. It's super cool. Shielded memos are no, like something that I, I think didn't even like really learn about until Zcon Zero, but have become one of my very favorite features of Zcash. And I love the little culture around them also, the whole Z to Z thing. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. It's super, um, it's super unique to Zcash and I really enjoy it. Cool. But we'll have to make sure not to break that when we because <laughs> <when we laughs> it, it, it is actually really hard to, to maintain the, um, that anonymity layer. Um, mm -hmm. That's where it's currently a broadcast layer. And, it doesn't scale, but. Um, Matt, is there anything that, any outstanding thoughts or bits of discussion? Uh, I'm so boring today. I'm just trying to keep, I, like I feel like we're just around the corner with mm, this governance stuff. And, and so I'm just keeping track and kind of like trying to not like bite all my nails off and see how, see how all the sentiment collection goes, so. Well, That's you it. I'm excited. Why? That's the other thing. I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. OK, so, thank you very much, Sonia, for hosting. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you all so Shut much up. for participating. And I think it's for real this time. I'm going to stop the recording and then leave the call. Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's <laughs> always you. a pleasure to talk to you all. It's always so fun. You have so many. So many thoughtful thoughts. The thoughts are full of thought.
We try. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye.